Hello, welcome to evening prayer. Yeah, best half hour of your weekend coming up. As usual, there'll be some prayers, some readings from the Bible, some meditation, and in the heart of it, some music and some silence for your own prayers. This evening, a lot of the readings are from the works of St. Augustine of Hippo, who was lived in the late 4th and early 5th century. Um, he was a bishop in Hippo, North Africa, which is now, um, I think it's now Algeria. Don't quote me on that. But he is one of the people who have created what we now understand as how to be a Christian. He had a quite wild childhood, lots of sex and drugs, and then he uh, went to Milan where he met St Ambrose and listened to him explain what faith in Jesus meant. And he had this voice in his head which kept on and on saying, pick me up and read me. And eventually he decided this must be God trying to say something to him and that what he should pick up and read is the Bible. And uh, he read the works of St Paul, absolutely transformed him. He became a Christian, Ambrose baptised him, seeped himself in understanding theology and wrote and wrote and wrote. And uh, one of the books he wrote is The Confessions and that is the book that three of the readings this evening come from. So let's begin our prayers. I'm going to light the candle and then we'll settle and then we will start. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Save us, O Lord, while waking and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The first of our readings from St Augustine is a great cry of praise to the Almighty God. My whole heart I lay upon the altar of your praise. A whole burnt offering of praise I offer to thee. Let the flame of my love set on fire my whole heart. Let naught in me be left to myself, naught wherein I may look to myself but may I wholly burn towards thee, wholly be on fire towards thee, wholly love thee as though set on fire by thee. Amen. That was St Augustine responding to Psalm 138. And we're going to say 130, Psalm 138 to follow it. There is a repeated line which I'd like us to all to join in. It is, for the glory of the Lord is great. So please say that again and again after every line, even if you're alone in your own home. Say it out loud so that we're a community of praise together. I praise you, Lord, with all my heart. 
for the glory of the Lord is great. Forsaking all other gods, I will sing your praise, for the glory of the Lord is great. I will bow down towards your holy temple, for the glory of the Lord is great. And I will praise your name, for the glory of the Lord is great. For your unfailing love and your faithfulness, for the glory of the Lord is great. When I called, you answered me, for the glory of the Lord is great. You have greatly emboldened me, for the glory of the Lord is great. May all the leaders of the earth praise you, Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Let them hear what you have decreed, for the glory of the Lord is great. May they be aflame with the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our scripture reading this evening comes from the Old Testament. It's from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, the first three verses. Gather together. Gather yourselves together, you nation that is acting with shame, before the decree takes effect, and that day passes like wind-blown chaff before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's wrath comes upon you. Seek the Lord all you humble of the land, you who do what he commands. Seek his face evermore. Seek his righteousness. Seek his humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. And this is St. Augustine's response to those words. He wrote, Seek his face evermore. If God is always being sought, when is he found? Your faith has already found him, but your hope still seeks him. When will he ever be found so as to fully satisfy us, so that we will no longer need to search? When we see him face to face in the reality of all he is, will he still have to be sought? Will he still need to be sought without end in order for us to love him without end? Sometimes we say to people, I'm not looking for you, meaning I don't really like you. So you can see that a person who is truly loved is sought even when he is present with you, and even when he is fully loved. And besides, he who loves anyone, even when he sees him, without ever being tired of him, wants him to be there always. He always seeks his presence. Surely, 
This is the meaning of the words, seek his face evermore. Discovering God doesn't mean that seeking him should come to an end. The more you seek, the more you will come to love. How late I came to love you, O oh, beauty so ancient and so fresh. How late I came to love you. You were within me while I had gone outside to seek you. Always you were with me and I was not with you. You called, you cried, you shattered my deafness. You sparkled, you blazed, you drove away my blindness. You shed your fragrance and I drew in my breath and now I pant for you. I tasted and now I hunger and thirst. You touched me, and now I burn with longing for your peace.
And now our intercessions, our prayers for the world. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you love your whole creation and forget none of your creatures. We bring you our prayers for all your children. For all those we love and all those committed to our care. For all who have blessed us with kindness, led us with patience and restored us by their help. For all who have wished or done us ill, that you would turn their hearts to penitence and ours to blessing. For all who pursue the health of our planet and meet this month to seek a change of ways and a future in which human life can continue. For those who lead our church in the General Synod, lead our nation in Parliament, lead our world in the United Nations. For our Queen, For those who seek to protect and heal us from viruses. For those who suffer from oppression and those whose faith in you brings persecution. For all who have experienced loss or are fleeing their homes in fear or are risking their lives to find a place of asylum to call home. For those who do not feel safe walking on our streets, For all who bear the cross of suffering, who are sick in body or in mind. For those who are lonely or sad, in the midst of the joys of others 
and need a friend and comforter. For the infirm, the aged, and all who are approaching death, that they may find their strength in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. And this is the collect, the special prayer for the feast day of St. Augustine, which is actually in August. But it's a beautiful prayer and never too late. So we pray. Lord God, the light of the minds that know you, the life of the souls that love you, and the strength of the hearts that serve you. Help us, following the example of your servant, Augustine of Hippo, so to know you that we may truly love you. So to love you that we may fully serve you, whom to serve his perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A moment of quiet to add our own prayers to what has gone before, and then we'll say together, the prayer that Jesus taught us. So we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us through the long hours of this night and the opportunities of a new week and bless all those who we love forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for evening prayer. We'll meet again on the evening of Sunday the 4th of November when Vaughan Pomeroy will be leading our service. May I wish you a good night. You are loved by a good and gracious God. Take joy in that. Amen. <laughs>